Hi there, uh, my name is Mark. I am the uh, much older and uh, certainly much less attractive half of the, uh, of the Snazzy Little Things team. I'm the guy that builds a lot of these things that, that Jeanette takes and makes into, into something pretty spectacular. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Uh, finally get myself involved a little bit in some of the, some of the uh, posts and tutorials. We've seen a few of the plans coming out here uh, recently. Um, but right now, today, we're going to focus on this beam project. And we decided that we're going to put a couple of beams up in our sunroom, kind of, kind of like a small cathedral ceiling in the sunroom. And we wanted those beams to look like they were hand hewn. Um, a term you may have heard before hewn means nothing more than cut with an axe. So uh, I've seen a lot of tutorials out there on kind of how to do this. Um, and a lot of them, or most of them, kind of tend to just take a chain or something and, and beat the tar out of it, which is fine if, you know, if you've had a bad day or you want to take out a little aggression on a, on a piece of wood, but I'm a little bit more fussy um, and would like to, to kind of talk through with how these things were actually made and see if we can simulate or show you how to simulate uh, um, that process so that when you do hang this thing up there, it's going to have a lot of visual impact and it also look... Um, you know, even on reasonably close inspection, it looks like the thing was, was, was made by hand. So what we started with here, this is one of those basic projects. We use one by six cedar. Uh, you can buy it at the, at the, at the hardware store um, with the kind of rough edge on it, or rough face on it. So it's kind of, kind of hairy, for lack of a better term. Um, give it already a little bit of a rustic look to it. Just use two one by six or three one by sixes. Put them into a simple box. There'll be a plan for this on the on the blog here coming up. Very very straightforward. Um, I'm not going to focus now on the construction of the box, but the actual aging of it. So when you put one of these things together, obviously you're using lumber that's been cut in a mill uh, with with you know, modern band saws, table saws, all those kind of things. So you've got these nice square edges. Um, and nice, uh, you know, even surfaces and all those kind of things, which is not at all how these things were made uh, 150 years ago, or these ones that we see in the barns or, or you know, old houses that that we find so attractive. Right. So, <clears throat> so the next piece, we're gonna ready. We're ready to start aging. Right. So what we got to think about is the way in which these things were actually made. Okay. So the way in which you know, if you're building a barn out in the middle of nowhere, you got no access to power tools, you got no access to a uh, bandsaw or anything like that, they would uh, cut down a tree, um, take that big log, the straightest one they could find, it was the length that they needed it to be, or relatively close to the length they needed it to be. They'd lay that log on a, on a little pedestal and would hack about every two feet, they would cut a notch in that top round surface of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the log and try to get it about the same depth all the way across. So they would do it every couple of feet and then what they would do is come in, flip that on the side and come in at an angle and chip that section out between those notches, right? So you're not trying to peel the whole length of the thing. It gives you a little bit more manageable. So they would put a notch here, a notch here, flip it on the side and come in and cut that out and the, and the wood would chip out and you'd have a relatively flat surface to start with here. But the act of doing that, right? So they do that with a with a with a big axe or what's called a broad axe, um, would obviously leave marks in the in the beam as you're doing it. So we want to simulate those first. And you'll notice if you actually look at some 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 of these old beams, you'll see these very very prominently. So you just take your take your axe. If you don't have access to one, you can fabricate this with a chisel. Um, or anything that's going to cut a straight groove on here. I mean, most people have a little handy axe laying around somewhere. And all you're going to do is just every couple of feet, we're going to, we're going to make a series of, of notches that represent this chopping action that we did where they cut the notches out in the board. Okay. You'll, when, when you stain these, the stain soaks into these, into these grooves and it just really looks fantastic. And 
then you do it on down the line and make you know obviously they didn't cut it with one one cut it was a series of, of hits so you're gonna have a series of notches in your board okay so once you've got those things laid out and, and it's strictly up to you visually how you want to do it but that starts to give it the, the kind of the realistic look and then you want to do it on all three sides that are going to be showing because they would have done it repeated that for all four sides of the, of the beam um, I would recommend that you don't you know put them in the same spot stagger them a little bit because it, it would have done it that way they would have done it in the most convenient way possible so stagger the ones that you're doing on the side and the ones that you're doing on the bottom uh, again which is strictly aesthetic that's up to you so that's the first set of marks that, that, that would indicate that this thing had been made made by hand. Next piece of it is when you're buying, and I've already started on this a little bit, when you're buying lumber at the store, it's been run through a table. So obviously you have these super square perfect edges on the beam, right? Same, same process. They would have taken this thing, gotten it down to a rough square, and then they would have taken their hatchet and done the same thing along the edges to try to get it down to the square. But it was not going to be a square, a square edge. It's going to be chopped with a hatchet um, so that you've got these nets and gouges and all those kind of things. Keep in mind these barns that folks are building um, weren't terribly worried about the aesthetics. They were more worried about getting it in a relatively good shape so that it would be a good construction material. So you would go down all the way down the edge and just knock those corners off kind of randomly so that you end up with, with an edge on here, a corner on here, and I'll do some close-ups of this that, that look as though it was hand cut. You see down here a little perfect, and you just whack those off, okay? Pretty simple, it's all up to you, that's the beauty of it. You can make it as rough as you want, or as uh, unrough, to, to make up a word. Um, but uh, you really want to get these edges looking like you know, not too perfect, right? Just chop them off with a thing. So the next thing that would have happened with these logs is this, if this were a solid uh, piece of pine or oak or walnut, um, would have been extremely heavy, uh, particularly if it was a 20 foot long beam that was used on a barn or a, or a cathedral ceiling or something. So what they would have done was wrapped a chain or a rope around one end of it and drug it probably, maybe put it on a cart, but, but quite often they would have just drug it to the site. And one of the things that you see when you, if you think about it, um, they didn't get a whole lot of wear and tear when they were up on the roof, up on the ceiling, right? Uh, unless people were throwing, you know, balls around the house or rocks around the house. This damage occurred as they were moving it to, uh, into place to get, to get, uh, used and you're going to see marks on on it from being drugged across the field from ropes being tied to it from things being hooked onto it chains all that kind of stuff so those are the kinds of things that we want to reproduce the most common way to do that most popular way to do that and this is fantastic if you've had a bad day at work get yourself some chain this is a little lighter than than what i would like but i happen to have it lay around i didn't see any sense in buying it and then just kind of randomly just smack the wood and create these random little dings and dents uh, that would have occurred throughout the process of moving it, of hoisting it up into place and putting it into the, um, into place inside the building. Now, these make really, really cool little random marks. And, and one thing to remember, guys, is, is that each one of these different textures that you're creating by the hatchet marks, by the dings, and all of that kind of stuff, are going, to, are, are going to take the stain slightly differently, so they're going to be really visible. Well, they're going to be very attractive when it's up on the up on the ceiling, and much more attractive than just a plain old board, right? So you think of other things that probably would have happened to it, of course, across the way. It might have hit rocks. It might have hit um, all kinds of things. They probably hit it with a hammer. They hit all did all kinds of things to it. So any other items that you have lying around, a hammer, the back square side of a hatchet, is a great tool. And just walk through and put some random dents. Use different surfaces so that you get you know, a look uniform. Obviously, it wouldn't be as a result of being drugged across the field. 
hit it with a hammer, maybe a gash here, round up the corner. Just generally beat the tar out of it to give that kind of effect that, that simulates what it was that was uh, happening to it as it was being drawn across the field. If you want, you can make up your own story for it. Say, so, okay, well, this you know this particular beam came uh, clear across a, a Vermont forest and it was drug, <laughs> drug through a creek, whatever you want to use. Uh, to kind of get your creative mind going in terms of the kinds of gashes and dents that are in it. And then when you stain this thing, all of these, these dents are going to show up uh, and, and really be an interesting looking piece. That's it, guys. The, um, keep it the, the, the kind of the message I want to leave you with is we could randomly beat these things up, but we might as well take a look at, at really what we're trying to simulate. And that's the thing being handmade. So let's, uh, my suggestion would be to go take this approach scar it up in a way that looks like it might, one might have actually been scarred up and, and then put it up in your ceiling and, and enjoy it. Uh, that's, uh, that's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it and I look forward to talking to you again real soon.